Hello, welcome to the Mad Witch Cottage. I thought I'd share with you a little first impressions that I've got on uh, Oracle du, de Giselle Flavie. Um, this is a majors only deck and it's, I, I don't know when it was even printed. I don't think the little book's gonna tell me. Um, not sure, to be fair. Um, it's by France Je Production. That's it. That's all I know. And I, I can't remember. I think I saw it on Catamancy Tarot's channel. And because of my name being Giselle, I just, I loved, I loved the idea of having this deck. So I can tell you a little bit about about it. It is. Um, the Key of Life is the translation for, Le, I don't know if this is the correct, correct pronunciation, Le Clé de Vive, I'm not sure um, if I'm right or wrong, and I'm sure someone will correct me. Um, the artist's name is Anarim, which is actually Marina, spelt backwards. And she was born in 1896, and she came from a very well-known Russian uh, family of painters. And uh, she came to France after the Russian Revolution in 1918. Now, I love medieval history, but I'm also increasingly getting interested in learning more about the French Revolution, the Russian Revolution. I find it fascinating. Um, and if any of you ever watch Lucy Worsley, you can see how um, you can get really into all of this, you know, these this time in our uh, past. And if you read Philippa Gregory is another one who does a wonderful job of bringing history to life in a kind of fictional way so that you can um, really sort of download it and remember it in your mind. Because often when you're, you know, doing history, I think you, you can easily lose some component parts if it's too dry. Um, it says about her, a sense of living poetry radiates from her work the composition of which is extremely harmonious. With subtle and finely shaded colours, this oracle was channeled by, channeled by Giselle Flavie through inner flashes of insight. All the major arcanas are expressions of pure inspiration painted by initiate who has scrupulously reproduced Giselle Flavie's visions in her drawings. So we've got this lady... Uh, my namesake, who has channeled this artist's work and created this uh, vision of um, of the majors. And as it's my only majors deck, I thought we'd have a, a a closer look at it. So here we have the butler. So we start with the magician. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to have to. It's so. I mean, it's not like we normally see our uh, magician, is it? Here it says a vigorous, impatient, impetuous young man, full of passion, energy, and fever. Um, he wants everything right away, and sometimes unaware of potential dangers lurking on his path. Fiery, overwhelming. Um, the privilege of youth makes him forget that he will need advice during his great initiate journey. He thinks that the number one bestows him all powers. His essence is purely divine, but he is far from being an initiate yet. So um, I love the uh, little booklet that comes with it. Um, it's in French. And English. I won't read them all out to you. I don't know. I got, we got this deck. My husband got this deck off, off the internet. Excuse me. I just need to have a quick slap. I made myself a coffee latte. I don't know if I said it already because I've tried to do this video before, but it's made from oat milk, medjool dates, almond butter. I used some filter coffee, um, oat milk, and I've added some ice 
and it's delicious is all I can say. Um, so here we have the High Priestess, La Papesse. I love that we've got this detail at the bottom. Um, a fig it says that filled with knowledge, acknowledging the signs and respects and the homage that the magician expresses towards her, the High Priestess watches him. Um, that's the, the picture on the cover of the book. Lots of symbols at the bottom. Um, it says, it, so this is quite nice because it gives a lot of numerology. The number two gives her the power of, to fertilise her own energy. Um, so that's really interesting. Um, um, as I say, I, it's not fair to read out all of it because um, one will be here all day. <laughs> well, certainly longer than I want to be. Uh, the Empress is next. Um, and here she's called uh, La Empresse, Imperial, imp I can't say it, can I? Let's just stick with the Empress. <laughs> she is domineering, powerful, a lofty sovereign. I don't know if I see that in that picture, really. Let me just have a peek. Um, uh, her Passivity makes her a little distant. She can be an idealistic and she's always succeeds in reaching her goals as she guides as a guide for the magician. So it feels as if with uh, this book, it's using the magician almost like the fool who's walking his journey. So it'd be interesting to see what they do say about the fool at the end. Um These seem to be um, people that the magician is meeting on his journey. She is less tolerant than the high priestess. For our magician, she symbolizes power, but also suspicion and distrust. I don't know that I've ever seen the empress in that way at all. Um, so here we are with the emperor. And he's holding the key and there's the, the door. And it says that he rules over everything and can bring everything. Uh, the most, the least, and the power to open all doors. Um, our little Pope looks like, um, I'd say, a f sort of monkey type of person. Not monkey, I mean monk. <laughs> Oh dear, it's too early in the morning. He presents himself in a manner of a king. A divine em emanation radiates from this very powerful, very strong arcanum. Um, I don't know that I see that, but I guess that that's, these are good ways to learn the maybe some of the characteristics of the archetypes of the major arcana. Um, forever a student I am. The lovers is, um, he is looking for the right path to take, but will the progress, will he progress towards wisdom? And I think it's really nice because the lovers is more about choices and it's about making the right choices. And the dove represents the way he must follow. But the other woman invites him, offering him a world of lust and sensuality. And, and so th there's, you know, there's always those choices to make. <clears throat> uh, now we're on to the messenger, which in, in um, would be the chariot. Um, so our magician has become more confident. He is proud and joyous rider, happy to be alive. So there's definitely a story being told through these cards. And I think that's great fun to study with and to read through this journey before you even start pulling the cards. Le Justice uh, in position eight. Here, everything is weighed out, measured. The sentence will be proportional to your past. So there you have it. And then we're on to the sage, which would be our lovely hermit. He is next to his cave where he is retired from the world to meditate. 
what a beautiful place to be. And I think so many of us like being in that mode. Um, I'm just going to have to have a sip of my delicious, gorgeous latte. Mm. That is so easy to make and so cheap actually to make. And oh, yum. Uh, the Wheel of Destiny is our Wheel of Fortune. Here we have the symbol of perpetual motion. Everything moves ceasingly, bringing both joy and pain, which we also know to be true. Um, they're such a sweet, unusual little deck. Uh, La Force, obviously for strength. The, mag the magical force which radiates from this arcana is powerful. The Lion King is calm and serene. I love that image. I think he's beautiful. Uh, La Pendu, of course, the Hanged Man. What an interesting card. This is the perpetual motion in search for profit in a mad race for all the gods of this world. Well, that's crazy in itself. Um... In this disorderly quest, gold coins are falling, representing the energies which we misdirect and which become worn out in a vain search. I, I'd have to go on and read a bit more to find out how this relates to the normal um, hanged man. Thanks to a Preparation dictated by understanding, however, and generosity towards others. In one word, thanks to the act of sharing, these same energies would not be wasted. I'm not understanding the connection to the hanged man at all here. Um, seek the truth, genuine plan. Uh, the number 12 indicates the end of a cycle. I'm yeah I'm not not quite there with that I'll have to sit with that for a while longer because that's not not really um helping me to be honest um the nameless arcana is number 13 which of course would be death and here we have a tree that crumbles down destroyed by thunder um oh no wait a minute no Am I being stupid? No, that is death. Yes, of course it is. It's just reminding me of the tower and confusing me a little bit. So that's our uh, death card. Temperance. Here we have communication. Uh, the transmutation of forces. I think that this deck will work very well, actually, incorporated with the other deck that I'm going to show on a separate video and that's they've kind of married already the snake is our um, devil card and here we have temptation the irresistible attraction of good and evil and the elements uh, represented water through the Scorpio earth through the tree fire through the burning bush air through the snake moving deceitfully Able to bring a soft breeze, but also destruction through hurricanes. Okay. So now we're on to um, it's called lightning in in this um, deck, but it's called on Fondra. Is that Fondra? Um, hold on a second. I just want to. I'm having to, my brain's having to try and work its way through the, um, fondue, fondue, for food, I, I don't know, my ability to speak French has long left me, fond, that's what we're going with anyway, but in the English version it's called lightning, I personally would just stick with the um, French but whatever everything collapses the earth trembles and the heavens open up and fire splutters out from above 
that's uh, that's quite a not not the easiest card for me to read but obviously the building's already crumbled uh temperance is hope in the english translation um and here we have hope in the heavens and um a small star is lighting up and shining out it will never leave you anymore the loon the moon i think that's a lovely card oh you magical and celestial body who pretended to be a dead star when in fact you have been influencing us consistently in the course of our lives the soul the sun it shines shedding light and warmth on all the living forms of the planet and we've got judgment the time has come to account for your actions what have you done with your life and le monde the world revealing the path of the great initiates the door opens up here our magician has finally recovered his freedom and then we have le mat which is the fool so he comes at the end of this deck and isn't numbered obviously but he's not numbered as 22 either a dove is the star dotted sky indicates to him the path to be followed the pyramids behind him show that he leaves victoriously a very different path um that of initiation so it's it seems to me that he is being given um as a magician he's becoming the initiate and then as the fool he is the initiate who's going to no doubt go on um there's another little bit here that shows, if you like, the uh, the normal meanings, I suppose, you might want to you know, suggest. And then um, it breaks it down into a carton and a very simple draw. So we have, we do have a couple of spreads and explanation of the four talismatic arcana so that must be these i think now i don't know anything about these um it says symbol of fertility and cornucopia we don't have cornucopia that's weird, isn't it? Tree of life. Here's love. And the four leaf. So there's the four leaf clover. Cornucopia must be abundance. Um, eros for love. So we have one, two, three. Yeah, we have four. So cornucopia is abundance. Tree of life. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So just It's confusing because they not using the same words um the cornucopia is symbol of fertility and of happiness filled with grains and fruit it pours out joy and prosperity on its own owners um the tree of life it brings one's mind the circle of life the leaves are a reminder of evolution Lack of ornamentation, once again, the vital force of the buds, of the life in general. Its sap is the heaving heavenly dew. Since its roots plug into the earth and its branches rise to the sun, it is a symbol of life and health. Eros, god of love, to be worn during romantic encounters. And the four-leaf clover, four, the four elements, the number of doors, that need to be cleared on the initiate path. But this is mainly a good luck charm. Carry it in your bag or in your pocket. The person who is lucky enough to find one by chance will be sure to get married before the year is out. Assuming you're not married already. Or else will be extremely lucky anytime soon. A clover pit during the night of St John the Baptist, which is June the 24th, 
is carefully kept because it's blossoms it blossoms once again at Christmas time. Um, so it doesn't actually say gypsy interpretation, still the 22 major arcana drawn out six cards at random, placing them face up. So it's just showing you these. Obviously, you cut up by the looks of it and you um, add those to perhaps the end of the reading to see which direction you're reading or, or the beginning to see which direction your reading's heading in or at the end to give uh, closure. So that's that little deck. Um, I thought it might be fun to show it to you because I have just acquired the Medieval Scapini Tarot. And I'm going to show this separately because I want to do these videos differently. So, um, but I think they're going to work really well together. Anyway, that's my waffling muddle through of the Oracle de Giselle Flavie. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye.